Hello, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and this video, we had a hero member that asked us to work on a project for him, and I decided, why don't we make this fun, and since it didn't have any privileged data, we'll record it, and I offered it to him at a discounted rate so we could share it with you guys to see the general process of when people hire us, kind of how the workflow goes. But they're in, by the way, you'll if you watch this video, you'll see a lot of really good learnings on how to work with Excel, how to, um, build a GUI, basics with that, the concepts, the ideas, and this, the first part's really interesting of, of the thought process to figure out what we're gonna do, and then um, the different approaches we take. So lots of really good lessons here. Hope you enjoy the video. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you like. You can always uh, reach out to us for consulting work if you care to. Um, it's a, you, as you can see in the video, um, we, we have a clue what we're doing, and we can save you a ton of time if you're looking for building custom stuff or automating your current programs. Have a great day, cheers. All right, so um, Connie, do you, uh, and I know you said you sent me one, I'm just not sure where I saved it. Do you have a, another example video that we can just give to Isaiah so he can play with it directly instead of? Um, sure. Do you think the um, the V2 window snipping, that you think it's easier to use the V1s? Because we have all the, some of the pieces we need, but how hard would it be to use the V2 version? I know it's not. I have a snipping tool um, in there that is V2, so we can use that. That's okay. okay. Yeah, let's let's go for it. So the so know, basically the the reason why I created a class is for this type of things. Like if I need to take screenshots very quickly, like yeah, that, that would be a class that I can. But, just add. but you can you can draw right. You can. I can it. use the area. No, yeah. I will draw. Uh, my my script will draw a, a GUI, but yeah. I just have to give it that area to the to the class. And it would know what to do with that area. Yeah, just making sure. Okay, so to back up a step for those watching, because this is our. Um, well, normally, like a client call, we don't have to explain what our goal is, right? But um, Connie is a client, and uh, he his goal is to he he's doing inventory at his job, and they have videos of stuff, and he wants a simple way to like look at the video and be able to, you know, easily isolate. The problem is, you know, a video is a motion picture, right? So initially, he talked about having frames of stuff, but there's so many frames it'd be complicated. And also you wouldn't want probably the whole screen. So we thought probably use the window snipping tool to just identify what it is. And then he wanted that into, the end goal is to be able to print out a PDF for insurance reasons of here's a picture, here's like a title, here's maybe the price, the date, you know, a registration number or whatever, right? So we talked it over and we're also not looking for something crazy complex and it's sort of a one-off thing, right? So. Um, we said, well, we'll probably use our window snipping tool to get the picture and then build a simple GUI to where he can tag it in different ways, put in info that he wants, and then hit a button and it will add it to a new row in Excel, um, which then later, whether it's that tool or a different tool, it doesn't really matter. We can take that Excel file and grab the path to the file of the picture and the other info and render it in probably HTML to, with the browser to convert it to a PDF that he can then print out um, and and have available. So, so that's let's, if you're, so, and this is how I usually do this kind of thing. So there are several steps going on, and that's what makes it seem very complex. But when you deconstruct it, there's a few things. One of them is a little GUI that will ask you the same columns that you have in an Excel file. So we have to start there. What are the columns that you need so that I can convert that into a GUI? Once I have that, and once I have this um, form that I hit a button and it puts it into the into Excel, then we go to the next step, which is going to be, okay, look through all these files, put them into an HTML that looks nice, and then we go ahead and print that. So we're going to separate those two. Let's hope that I can do it in the amount of time that we have, but at least we can get a very big chunk of it done very quickly. So um, first question, Connie, um, can you send me over either Telegram or here in Zoom, the list of columns that you want to fill in that Excel sheet? So I know for sure that we will have, I, I think, first of all, even if you don't tell me that, my programmer brain is saying, I need, to ident I need a way to identify that one product that I'm working with. So an ID is like a must, like an ID for this product, because if you have four pictures of the same product 
how can I tell the program that those four pictures belong to that same product? So I need a way to identify a product so that later on, if I have many pictures, I can put them all in one place. So um, I, I don't know if you are capturing that already or if you want me to add that. I, I have a sample of Excel spreadsheet that I've started with and I'm building a, a, a email to send it to you. Is that okay? okay. Email? That, that's totally fine. So um, do you have my email or Joe's email? Yes. Yes, I do. I, I've already cool. sent you a, a video. You should already have the video. All right. So what I'm going to do and here here comes the uh, the Excel spreadsheet. You should All have right. that in your. Did you receive them? I will see in a second. Hold on. So okay. what I'm going to do real quick here. Um, hold on. Um, I have to create here, let's say, um, right. So what I'm going to do with this folder, I'm going to open it with VS code. This is what I'm going to be working. I need a library folder and I need a script folder, which is, we're going to name later organizer, HK. Maybe two. All right. Let me see. Hold on. Um, where should I? Let me see. I can just start over a a new Excel file, and you just send me over what the columns would be. Don't worry. Okay. And I can just start with those first. So one of the first things. Let's go with something like ID. All right. I need the image. All right. And this is very important because if I have four images that belong to the same ID, that's what is going to tie them all together. And then I will need some properties for the file. Um, can you try and send the video or the file through Telegram? Do you like. Or just send them to me. Yeah, either way. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I, I have him. Here's also. the thing, is this. We don't really need the video. You can you can use yeah. Our can use desktop. anything. Yeah. What I'm looking for is the is the the headers that he needs. That's what I'm looking okay. for. Okay. I'll uh, I'll drop it in Telegram. Yeah. Thank you. So here we need. Uh, all right. So this was those are spaces, right? So let's just. Split it on spaces, I guess. Um, that included the first that. Oh, it, I included one line of data too. Sorry. No. Okay. No, that's fine. That's not the so theory. it's category, item, value, make, model, ending with notes. Yeah. So let me let me just do that. Yeah. Category. Now it worked. That's interesting. Item value, make a model. Those are two things that go together. That's fine. Serial number. That goes here. Purchase date. Um, location and notes. Okay. Probably uh, a timestamp would be good. I'm sorry, what? A timestamp? A date that it, the, a time the, stamp the date. Date. Right. All right. So let's so look at this. Item at this point would be the name of the item, right? Right. But I want to create kind of like an ID as well. Or maybe, well, yeah, because you can have two different chairs. They're both named chair. But the ID would be different. We have an image right. URL, and then we have the make and model serial number, first state, location notes, and you just said the last one thing. Um, date. A date so stamp. Date. The date of when you ran it. Is that what you're saying, Connie? The date right. while it was it was added. Yeah. No. Okay. That's fine. When the picture was added. Yeah. Right. So a few of those categories will be. 
um, done automatically by my tool. So that's something that I want to make sure I mark. So these two guys, I think they're going to be automatically calculated, but I don't have to think about them. Let me just mark them. So those are automatic. This will be based on the image that we take. This you're going to fill out yourself, I guess, right? Right. And then location and notes. So that's this. Go to mockups. Well, and we can decide here, but what I was going to say also are some of them are required and some of them are optional, right? Right. That's another thing that we're going to talk about. Yeah. So I just grab any of these tools that I usually use to build GUIs. And let me just think about what I need. So what I need is, OK, so I need to be able to take a few screenshots. So probably a list in here would be good, because every time I take a screenshot, I would have just added to the list. That's one. The category item, so yeah, I will have. I don't. I, I guess you're thinking about it differently than I am. I, I I don't see a need for a list view here. You can. Did he say that he can take several pictures of the same? Yeah, but we would just like use a different hotkey and add it as a new row in in Excel. Why do we need to see it here? That's true. Yeah, well, that's fine. I, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't have it. That's just how I was thinking about it. No, yeah. The way how I'm thinking is when you take the first screenshot, this GUI shows up, and then you can take more screenshots and you can see them popping up in the this view. Like, and then you have a button that says same, and it would go to the row to, and it would put them all at once in here in, in in Excel. That's basically what my my brain was saying. But let's go for it. Then category. So let's have the name, the item name. That would be in field. So I would need the item name. The category. What do you mean by value? Is that money? Yes. How much it costs? Okay. Make a model. All right. Serial number. Let's make make put make and model into two different columns. Make and model. We're gonna put them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, because that way we can actually filter by those or sort by those two. And it probably would have been had to been pretty wide field, which this way that you're kind of helping your right. make and model. So let me add the. Uh, so this is going to be the category. So here's the thing. We will have all of these buttons. Uh, well, that's the point. So let me just organize those into. So category. Yeah. Value. I don't know that I need category. That's all right. We can. Sorry, you don't need the what? Category. Categories left over because the, the the program that I was using had a category. Oh, so you don't need to categorize. I don't them? think I don't think I need it. Okay, you see that's exactly the reason why I do this first because. Just imagine that I've been programming and I already did all that. And then you tell me, oh, I don't need the category. But now we figure this one out beforehand, before we do anything with the program, which is basically what why this is a very important step. And also later on, when we go ahead and try to put this on the, um, how do I say, on the V and the list view, like on the GUI, I don't have to think about it. I already know where it goes. You see what I mean? Right. So at this point, we just say, OK, so we don't want the category at this point. So item and its value, OK, the make and model burst, they seem to be related, right? Then the serial and um, I would say location and purchase date that's okay but then the notes could be something a little bit bigger because you might want to type a little bit more than that right so this purchase date we can have it at the top then we move all of this together 
a little bit down. Um, let's see if this looks a little bit better. Actually, a uh, purchase date's not important. Purchase date is important. It's not important. A lot of mostly, I won't be. It'll be an empty field. You see. Okay, so that's again <laughs> examples of what we're doing, why it is important, and how it simplifies what I'm doing. So I just need a few fields here, right? Um, and now that I have them, notes down here, and a list view that tells me how many images I have, if I've taken a few screenshots or whatever, and then I would need a button. Give me just a second. I would say the OK to send it over to Excel. Whoops. And another one to cancel, maybe, in case you didn't want to do that. So the idea is when you hit the husk, when you take the first screenshot, this GUI is going to show up. You're going to include all the information, and then you can take more screenshots, and they will automatically go to this list view. And when you hit OK, that would go straight into Excel. Does that make sense? I think that mm. unless you want me to do it another another way. Cool. So you're saying that I could take multiple images of the same. Uh, that was one of the things that I thought Joe mentioned that yeah. sometimes, for example, you have a chair, but you have three pictures of that chair and you want to make sure that all of them go to the same chair, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm referring to about multiple pictures. Now, the mechanics of that, it depends. It doesn't matter how we do it. But I think if you take the first screenshot, it would put it in here with the information. In, you fill up. And you can just hit OK and that's done. Or you can take more screenshots, and they will just be added into this view if it is already there. And then when you hit OK, it just adds them all with the same ID because it will be related to the same thing, right? Connie, remind me, are you running this on a laptop? Or how, how big is your screen? I'm going to run it on, uh, on a desktop. OK. All right, no worries. So this That's point, the whole idea, is that I, I, I can just go around and take pictures on in the room and avoid all of this. But what right. I prefer to do is sit at my desk and fill in the data. Yeah. So the first thing now that I'm going to do is create a GUI. Oops. And I'm going to call that the main GUI. And what I'm going to do here is to say, OK, so class main, um, this is kind of like the main GUI. Everything that I'm going to do with it, it extends a normal GUI. So I don't have to work. But special things that I'm going to do on this window are going to be related to that. Now, what I'm going to do is my, um, now let's call it default. And my main GUI is going to be type default. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say add. An edit field, all right? It's going to be 300. And there's something that Joe and I we have been talking about it a while. We're going to be adding a few edit fields. So let's call this the edit width. And that way, all of them have the same width, and I can modify them all at once. Um, this first one is going to be the one that we talked about, one we saw it here, the item. This is going to be item. And um, once I have that, which is there, then I will need to add the next one, which is the value. And now this one is going to be to the right of it. That's it. That's, that tells me to the right. If I don't put that, it will be below. And now I can just duplicate this and say, make a model. So this is going to be the make. This is going to be the model. And serial and location. 
number and location. Now that I've done that, let me look at it and see how it's looking. And I can just run this file. All right, so I need to restart the GUI every time I create a new row, right? I have to force it to be a new row by saying XM in here. And when I do that, then that should look like what I'm expecting now. All right, so now notice how they are very big. I probably don't need them to be that big. So probably 200 might be just enough, all right? And we will label them up in a second. So that's looking OK there. Now I need a list view on them. No, so let me see. Let me do the notes now. So this is an edit now called notes. This one is going to be starting on a new row. And now here, I'm going to have it have, I don't know, 20 rows. There we go. And I need the width to be double of that in, plus in this. Connie, um, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this question, but what what size of font do you normally, like I, I know you're not a spring chicken, right? What size of font do you want to have to where you can read it easily? That's a little bit larger than that, what he's got there. Yeah. All right. This guy. So list views, I often add a global variable to them because it's easier for us to work with it. And now I want to force it to be on a different column. And that's what IAM will do. And at this point, this should start up here. And I just need to make it as tall as the other things. So the um, width, let's use the edit width. Um, and the height, we're going to make it, I don't know, we said 20 over there, but let's see. And now the columns for this would be just the image pad. All right. Almost there, minus one, kind of a little bit bigger, so times two here. And let's make it 19 and see how it works. We're almost done, you see? So now we have this guy, and I just need the buttons down there. And I will set the text well, font to be a little bit higher. But Isaiah, are you gonna put, are you gonna use cues to let them know where what what's what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna label those in a second, yeah. Oh, sorry, okay. Yeah. So what's, the, the, uh, what's the pass box? No, no, in here, every time you take a screenshot, the path of that image is going to be here. Oh, just so okay. you know how many, how many images you have. So let me let me just label it image, right? Path, the importance of names. You know? Right. So now, as soon as I make the, the text a little bit bigger, all my widths are not exactly what we need. That's the reason why I have a variable. Now I can just modify that and everything will automatically <laughs> resize itself without me having to change each individual thing. Okay? So when you base stuff off of a variable, it makes your life easier in the end. I will make this a little bit higher, and we're good to go, I think. Planning and two buttons. Now, give me just a minute. So early on, uh, just to understand, understand the mock-up, some people get really caught up in fixing the font a certain size or set, and it's really much more of a rough kind of thing to make sure, it, like Isaiah showed, right? That like sometimes you realize you don't, you're missing key things. When I used to work in market research, I would build like a fake report off of the survey questions and show the report to people, and it would help us spot things like, well, crap, I didn't, I don't know how, what, how did this do? I'm like, you didn't ask the question, right? Um, so. The mock-up helps you spot those things of you're collecting data you don't need or you're missing key pieces that you want without doing a bunch of coding. You can do it in, in seconds or minutes instead of spending a lot of time and then redesigning GUIs um, can, can be time-consuming. So that's how we typically try to use mock-ups. Just don't yeah, know. I noticed he left, left out uh, okay, I'm sorry. the call. So one of the call. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, 
so here we are. Yeah, there we go. And now I need two more buttons. So I'm going to need price. Price. We will need the price. Wasn't it value that you said? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to so change that to price? price? So, yeah, we're going to change it to price. Yeah, it makes more sense to be. Well, price. it depends on your perspective, right? <laughs> but because right. it's for insurance purposes, to me, I do think value for me, but it depends, yeah. depends what hat you're wearing, right? Like, right. That's so this point, too easy to change. <laughs> right. It is. So at this point, we're, and then basically, we're. What it is internally doesn't mean that the label is going to be that. So the label could be anything. We're going to have an OK. Now, the here is the tricky thing with this. Let's just add plus minus 75. And if I do that, I can make the button. Y plus M here. I can make the button go to the left of whatever I was. So I can add now another button called cancel. Um, this is going to be x plus m, so it's to the right of it. And this guy is going to be times 2 plus the margin. I need a margin there. Name the um, margin x. Um, that should give me, oh, this is math right here. I have to do it. Outside of the quotation marks, that's it. So again, you you're seeing me doing some math stuff. It's just to save myself of some delays later on. But that's it. So we got basically the main idea. We will then later on work a little bit more on what the um what each of the stuff do. But my main concern here is what the OK button did. The cancel simply will just clear everything out and hide the window. So let's do that because that's very simple to do. And the cancel on event click, I would like to just um, not destroy the whole goodie, but basically default dot reset. All right. So I'm going to create a class. And that's why I created this class down here, so that I could now add these actions that only relate to that GUI, and it don't relate to anything else on my program. And the reset here, what I will do is for all of the controls in this list, so I will just go for control in these controls. What we're going to do is, uh, no, I don't need that. What I need to do is the control the value equals empty. That makes it for most of them except for the list view. So what I'm going to do is switch on the control type. If it is a list view or a tree view, or a drop-down list, combo box. Yeah, those kind of things. I will deal with them later. But right now, I just have a list view. So I don't care about anything else. I just want to use the delete command. In any other case, I want to set the value to blank. That you will see in a second how that behaves. If I have a hot key that shows the GUI, this is just for testing right now. And I put some values. In it. What is going to happen now is that if I hit cancel, let me see, that's what I'm trying to do. In this is my. Oh, because this is static. I don't like that. So let's do main here. So let's try this. Okay. Here. So some of them already were done, and I can tell because the A index, we are nine right now. So it, it already cleared a few controls. But this control in particular is a button. So I do not want to do that one. So let's do this case 
if it is an edit, I will do it. The default is just to ignore. That's what I want to do. Then let's do this. I cancel it. It's gone. You see how everything is gone? So when I hit cancel, it just resets my whole GUI. And it would also close it. So first of all, it will reset everything. And I can just tag it first. Main dot tag. That's it. So that's what the reset does for that window. So whenever I call that window reset, I can just do that. That's it. And I could make this, you know what? Let me make it part of main so that it reads a little bit better. That's it. And then at that point, then we are talking about this in this context. And let's see if that's true. Everything is good. And if I look at it again, it's empty. Cool. So everything is good. Um, now let's deal with what happens when I hit OK. All right. So I just. I was able to do the cancel. Now I need the OK. So for that, we need to connect to Excel. So what we're going to do is transfer. So transfer to Excel, right? This is the function that we want to create. The next thing is it will connect to the com object. Now, let me ask you this. Is this? File going to have a specific title? Is it going to change? Is it always going to be the same? The title of the of the spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, failed. Yeah. Let's make it always the same. It's easier just if I want to um create. Yeah, we can start with yeah. that and later on. You know, so so we can start with one idea and later on modify it. Hold on, though. Let's talk, let's talk through a little bit of the usage. Connie, are you planning to be like, hey, I need to go do this, and so you create a new Excel file for what you're doing, or are you going to have one Excel file that you, you know, you come back tomorrow because you want to do another hour's work, whatever, right? You want to do more. Do you want it updating that original file? I think that, would, but yes, I think I would just maintain one file. Okay. If I decided that I needed a backup, I just create a copy of it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't know if you wanted to have them independent. Like I'm gonna do a bunch and then save it to its own file, and then tomorrow I don't want that connected to what I did today. But it's no, not, I, yeah, because in the end, I only want one file. That's yeah. So I think yeah. that answers the question of yeah. Okay, and so I can always file name and. Right. When I do the com object active, I think it does the one that is active at the moment. So you just have to have that file open. It doesn't matter um, what it is. The only problem is you have to make sure that it's the one that is open, right? So you can open the book first and then run the tool so that it connects to it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, the question is, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe I should connect as soon as the script starts. That's one way. Or connect when I start the process. That's the other way. So I think connecting as soon as the script starts makes sense. And for that reason, I'm going back to my organizer. This is my main script. This is the script that is going to launch everything else. And this one, I could just create a new Excel variable here that is com object active. And I will try to connect to the Excel application. And we can test it by saying Excel the range, let's say. A2 um, value equals test. And let's see what happens when I run this. So basically, what I'm expecting is that here I should find a test in the A2 row, which is connecting to the right one. So I know that it is connecting to the active one, even if I don't have a name, even if it is, doesn't have a, a file saved or anything, it just connects to the one that is active at the moment. What you should be careful is if you have two or three Excel windows open, because it will connect to the one that is the last active one, right? So that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to kind of like make sure is clear, because when you have two of them, look at that, it just connected to the other one. You see, right. so 
if you make this one the active one and then run your tool, now I would expect it to be there. You see, so it is working as expected. It's the last one that you had active. So for that reason, I would say you open the book and then open the organizer or we have the script do that. Open the book that you're working on and once it is active, then I connect to it. I think that's the best, like the most uh, safe approach. So we will do that later. For now, I'm just connecting to the Excel application. And let me include in here um, from our GUIs, the main GUI. So that's part of what it's going to do. All right. So now that I have that, then we go with the screenshot stuff. Now let me now let me work on the OK button. So transfer to Excel. We already have a connection to Excel up here, right? Um, so once I have that, I want to send some information. So I said that the ID and the dates are auto-generated. Um, do you want this date in a specific format? Or just the normal um, year month good. and hours, seconds, and minutes like this? Uh, yeah, I think that's great. That's easy. So we can start on it. You know, I said, oh, what did I do last yesterday? Okay, so I let you know. Oh, oh, so let me ask you this. So the time frame is the time is not important, it's just the date. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I will just remove the time for now, and later on, if we need it, we just add it. It's not a big deal. The ID is a one-time thing that gets um, um, assigned once. One of the ways that we can do this is just either have as the A now variable by itself. That already in itself is usually going to be like kind of like an ID. Um, or we can actually do the date difference date. Um, difference in seconds. So the time one would be now and 1970. What is it? 1970-0101. Um, so what happens with that is that it gives me the time in seconds and that's kind of like a timestamp. And it's a small number. Let's take a look at it and see what that looks like. See if I'm doing the correct thing here. Jim, uh, let me, yeah. You see this number? If we look at it on Unix timestamp, if I look that number up right here, I convert it, it should tell me today's date completely. So it, it is usually a good idea to use those numbers as an ID, because they're always, supposedly, are going to be unique. This is how I could create kind of like a little simple ID system based on time, because, yeah, one second later, I will get a totally different ID. Cool. Um, so I have my ID and my date, and then... Well, maybe, you don't, maybe we don't know that the ID wouldn't be sortable then, would it? Sorry? I was thinking that we've got the date in there twice now. Well, not exactly, but yeah. So because we have the date in one format and a different format. So, and that's totally fine. Uh, this one we just needed for visual effect, but this one I need it actually to be totally unique. So right. this would not be unique at this point. That's the reason okay. why that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. And actually, if you want both to be kind of like, well, they are going to be the same, don't worry. Now, the next stop is we have Excel. I need to insert a row. So what should I do here? Get the last row and then increase it by what? No, the thing is that I, I, I can insert something that's totally fine. Um, what I'm thinking is, yeah, I will just. Um, let's insert a row. So let's do that. 
No, no, let me do credit because we have that. I think we have that on the Excel. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why are you inserting one? Sorry, I, I was doing something else. Why are you inserting one? So, whenever one? I'm going to, whenever I finish taking the screenshots and adding the information, when I hit OK, that is going to insert a row in here. Boom. Wow. Put I, I just don't understand why you didn't insert a row. Did Sorry? You, why wouldn't you just go to the next available row? When you say go to the, yeah, because I would have to loop to get the last one. No, you, well, we have a function to get the, you know, used range, used rows. Anyway, I just, that's whatever. Okay, let me, let me, let me, hold on. Yeah, let me, let me see which one you mean. Hold on. Um, Excel library, I think we have the V2 here. I didn't know if you were trying to keep the newest at the top, which which possibly makes sense, but not that he was going for that. Okay, so this is what you're saying, like find the last row. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not the that one's right or wrong, right? I'm just no, no. Okay. Yeah. No, the thing is, I I just wanted to avoid looping. So if this does it without that, so that's okay. So notice how I changed the the first part because that refers to this guy right here. So on the connected, I'll find the last row. And I think that is a number, right? Oh no, that gives me the row itself. So on that row, um, you want plus one. Yeah. Yeah. I will do it here. And now, oops, nope. Let's do it. Well, that's a row number, right? So that's fine. So now on my range, when I say range, I want to keep that Excel the range. And at this point, for each star, and this could be a loop. I can do it as a loop, but let's do it visually first and make sure that it works first. So I am on the column that I want to change, the row number that I want to change. And at this point, it would be the ID. And then I will do this for all the columns up to column L, all right? So up to column L, start here. I think I have something that does this for me, but yeah. Okay, so I have that. So date is going to be the last one up down here. And then for each of these guys, I will just put the values that correspond to them. So let's look at it. And that would be one of these guys. So I will grab. And I think they are already in the same order. So how many did I select? I selected seven. So here I should have seven, right? Oh, no, there are 10 in here. What? That's the reason why I usually double check. Did we remove some things? Um, oh, I'm missing the image. So the image is number two. Category is gone, you said, right? So we don't need that. So category is done. Um, this is going to go here. Um, price make model. Purchase date is the other thing that it was gone, right? So we don't need that. Purchase date. Um, all right. So now I should have seven. I might like that purchase date. <laughs> Can we put Sorry? it in? Purchase. Well, I I like that you purchase that date. You, you mentioned that it was not important anymore, and we didn't put it on the on the okay. No, all right. Here. Now, do you think you need it or not? Because that's the thing. We just put it. Yeah, put it back in. Okay. Sorry. No, no that's, that's okay. But that's basically the reason why we do that, right? So 
even in here, like even when we did the mock-up, we can still change our minds and so yeah. on. Yeah. But just imagine this after we coded everything, you know, that, that's the part that right. gets really, really different from time to time. So, so now what I want to know is here, I have eight lines still, even though in here I have, oh no, yeah, so now I have eight lines. Okay, so, and I have to modify the GUI as well, so I have to look at it. Name. All right, so that's basically it, except for the images. So the images, what we're going to do is, um, for each row that I have, I will add the same ID and the same uh, and the image. So this is I have to the first row, and that's going to be from the list view. Get count how many images I have. So for each image I have. I will add the ID and the image, but then this is only if a index. So uh, if a index is not, sorry, is equal to one. So I just do this once, then I do this. What happens with okay? So this I want to do only once. But then I could have many images for the same ID. See, so that's what I'm trying to do here. And in here, I'm going to get the list view, get count. Um, and then we have a row here, LD dot get text out of the row that I have and just the first call. That will give me the text that is in there. That's it. So this should, in theory, allow me to transfer some text, let's add a few items, loop five. Let me add a few items to the list view here. And let's test it out. And what we're going to do now is connect our button. So our button here, we're going to connect it to this function right here. So on event flip, then we're going to go ahead and do main transfer to Excel. That's it. So I just connected the two functions. Uh, we only have like 10 minutes. I'm going to test this out. And I think we will continue with the next one next time. So. Okay, let me run it from here. And this main show, I'm going to put it on the main script. So the main script, what it's going to do is connect to Excel and show my main GUI. That's it. That's all it does right now. Later on, it might do some other things. But right now, it started like this. And you see, oops, I probably didn't have to do more changes to the GUI than I... I thought I would have to do more changes to the GUI than I actually have to. Um, this at the top, what is it? It is a date, right? So date purchased, right? So instead of an edit, let's add date time. And this uh, for the date time, I think you just need the date, not the, not the time, right? You don't need the time frame specifically. You just need the time. No, that's a that's a a value I'll put in. Yeah. Uh, let's, no, but what I'm saying is, you oh, don't just, need the time. No, I don't need time because right yeah. here I can make it a date control that you can click on it, select the date. That's it. You see what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So so that's what I'm kind of like looking for now. Let's say. Uh, Later on, we're going to label all of these guys. But I right now, the only thing that I want to do is see that I'm connected to the right thing and what happens when this is done. OK, almost. So it did put values in stuff. 
but that's not what I wanted. It. <laughs> I needed it on the next row. That's interesting. Hold on. Didn't I just add it one to that number? This is the row. It's so interesting. Okay, let's look at it. And uh, right here. Oh, what did you add one? Sorry? What did you add one? I did add one. So I did do that. That's the reason why I'm confused. So let me just one second because this. Thing, I'm sorry, I don't see where you added one. The plus plus. Um, and the plus plus right here. Oh. That automatically oh, yeah. adds one to whatever number I got. Are you so, sure? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good question. that's exactly what I'm going to check right now. Like that's that's a very good question. Like, am I sure? Well, I I'm not sure right now because it should have done it, but it didn't do it. So yeah. Um, uh, uh, I I think last row is returning zero, and then it's plus plus making it one. Yeah, I think that's what happened. So probably it didn't work as we were intending. And then here there was a date and uh like those here. And then this page. So basically what happened there is when I hit the OK button. Now I'm stopping here. The last row was one. So that's okay. Hold on. That is the last used one. That's one. So now I should make it two. So my last row, oh, oh, you know what? <laughs> you know, that's the reason why we ask those questions coming. You're right. I did add one, but I added it after the fact. So I have to say plus plus here not after it so that I make it to and assign that to row. That's what happened. So now when I do that again, let's just test it. Test one and more test here. So now when I do it, row should be two. There it is. And now we can expect this to what is this okay yes yeah, it's, it's doing it and now i should have okay at least it added one i will make sure that everything lines up later on the reason why some of these guys what is that item oh that's the date that is the date all right so as you can see we're almost there. I have, we have to finish up for now, just because we have the hero call in five minutes. But this covers the basic of how I created a GUI connected to actions that are related only to that GUI. They're only for that GUI, and they're not related to anything else. So I keep them contained only for me, and how I created that my script already connects to an existing Excel application and shows my GUI. Later on, what I'm gonna be working on, and probably that would be on, a, on my own, is adding this the screenshot thing so that I could then, every time I take a screenshot, it adds it to the list view. So here I needed to verify why this is not going several times. It should have looped, and actually that's what I would check. Like, if I have several of those, it should loop first time, so it does that. And then the second time, oh, well, the row. Ah, I have to update the row, of course. <laughs> so once I do that, once I do this whole thing, I have to do the next row. That's it. That's what's going on. So now if I add this information real quick, um, let me make sure that everything is done. So when I hit OK, I should get a few images. Do you see a few images for the same ID, but the information is only added once. See what I mean? So the next step is going to be 
making sure that we um, have the data in the correct spots because that goes in the other location. And um, yeah, hopefully that made a little bit of sense of what I'm trying to get at in here. And um, yeah, do you guys have any questions in these three minutes before we leave? Well, we don't, yeah. That's good. Yeah, so um, maybe this afternoon or, or coming, uh, we'll follow back up with uh, first off as is, are you just planning to put cues in there to to for the labels i assume yeah we will oh and yeah. then we'll also you know tie in the image um clipping tool to just be feeding it but got exactly. a lot there in, a, in an hour i think all right cool all right let me stop the recording Sorry, okay. and we'll see you well, i hope that'll be helpful for a lot of people yeah i think there's a lot of really good lessons you know, covered in that, that, that call. Cheers. Yeah. All right. So see where we left off uh, right now, the tool is adding a few things automatically. I'm not going to have that. I'm going to put it there. Second thing is that We added the information in the correct way. Okay. So it looks like if it is open and it is the active one, you make up to now. The question will be okay. How do I take a screenshot, right? So for that, let's do that. And you library. And I can take a screenshot of the whole screen active window or an um, area. I think. Start to plan. But Okay. Is this is this your code? That's when I want. If I don't know the region, now take a screen from this and I pass it an object for a location.
if I tell it exactly what it is, if I don't tell it what it is, and then what take it from I don't want the password. So now that I have that perspective, that's it. We're going to do a library. Usually, libraries or the group might need. But, and uh, now I have that. That's the idea. Say, let's say, both of them are going to rows. Okay. Ah, that's cool. This doesn't have There's a problem with using that statement. It doesn't always. Um, if it's not an object, it doesn't return a number. If it is an object, then it will try this. Not try that. Number, but oh. That is not. <laughs>
It's just Sorry, for it's an object. For that is this part must be true. If oh, I think I hope that object, but this happens. Area. Oh, I can. Now, there's that David. But I think How is correctly? Which is what I was talking when we were talking in the hero call. This, um, how would I say? This um, idea of having something in memory and transferring into a file, not a straightforward thing. And that's basically what I think. Thirty to uh, uh, by change. Now, your thing, 
very big right now. So high. But now when I use 32 bits, saving correctly, I don't use 32 bits. I use 4 bits. It's going to be. whatever the region was. That tell me size was. Then use that. So sometimes these two variables, W and W, are not set. And that is that happens, this part says if the variable is set, good, if it is not set, you know what I'm saying? Variable oh. is set, good, if it is not set. I'm just doing that because I know that sometimes it's not gonna be true, and that means those variables are not, not going to be set. If I know that I'm trying to make the, the code a little bit smaller. Now, when I try and do uh oh, because sometimes one, oh, that's. Why is that? Oh, because I'm passing this. So the show here, show it, I already have a region. That region. See now the screen smaller, it's not that big of the it's just whatever we capture. All right, so okay. I know that this is working. Um, but basically, instead of working with it, like looking at it, I don't want to look at it. Probably I will look at it, but I don't want to do that right now. I will do it without the caption. That if I make caption, so So show it, I want out action. It's gonna be oh good show option. This 
process. But I'm going to make it I'm going to use bus. both of them and Control whether to so it now I have that. so yep. that's interesting. Um, now. How do I get rid of some same one? Yeah. Eight. Now, I take a screenshot of that area, play it for me. Now, the other thing is, if the window is already there, right? It is already shown, I don't want to show it again. It doesn't make any difference. But here's the thing. If I already have that, Ah. Ah. Air control where your case would be wherever you decide to test uh, images. Second, I got the screenshot. I'm going to tell it where to do that path. Uh, uh, But whatever two save it and right away fix that path object later on outside of it. Right, right. So that's how I usually go with stuff. So now path that takes care of that. The other thing is those that I take a shot. Now, here's the problem with the screenshot. So is that I want to Define an area of my. What I'm going to do is, what hot key do you want for that? How do you want to? What is the hot key to define the area? 
Usually, usually when we do control drag, drag the window in front of this. But I don't know if you want windows drag, like for example, like this. This is what I'm going to be doing. So while I have windows pressed and dragging, does that. But it could be okay. It could be um, control drag or it could be windows drag. Um, it could be anything you want. What Windows drag would be fine. All right. So just, we'll just put a comment in there on what we're setting it up for. It'll be easy to change. All right, cool. What I'm going to do, as the Windows drag is being used by Windows Saving Tool, let's just uh, that for now. I don't want to mess with it. The other thing is, well, Saving Tool already has that. Let's Yeah, I probably don't want to interfere with the snipping tool, although I don't run it all the time. Sorry, what? I do use the Windows snipping tool. Oh. Yeah. Um, so. This is the plus you get the location. <laughs> While you have the mouse done by the size of the exit. Of course, that's all V1 code. That's V1 code. Yeah, that was V1 code. So I'm just looking at what we was seeing on. Just to confirm yeah, that yeah. I'm going to be doing it right. So basically, right. yeah, I'm not going to use the code that I'll be paying. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Knowing what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is, when you press the hotkey, say close. File, button. That I want to say now that I'm looking, I think I can. Oh, but I need this loop because that is fading. I need the loop. I don't like the loop. First, first look. Started. Then we have ending look. Then when you go of the map, part of the end, then I position. One X one plus one 
because what I want is time. How am I using? Um, yep. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Look at what that run. Oh, listen to that because I see. Now, see how the toolkit is working? I'm going to do another okay. So, see how the toolkit is right. That means that it looks at what I have. This is working as I want it. Idea now. Um, let me add from one point to another. I'll have to double check it. So, out of this, what we're doing is great. Have a cat. Okay, the current current color to be black, and then a Currency one hundred. That makes it a little bit more current than usual, and I will save it back. You can change this is RGB. Guy. Always same spot on X and Y. Stay in the same. I want all these five different. Then the Oh. 
That's why. Almost there. The rat. Oh. Okay. Oh, we could. But. With it. Uh, let me think about them. This is the part that usually takes. It is right, right. Take us very simple. So here, look at what I have here. X. That should not change. Okay. Sure. Uh, but yep. one, one, and I want to have. I want to ah, pretty hard. I would think it'd be Y2 minus Y1. Y, y, y I would think it would be the difference. Difference? So, so what I'm looking at is, see where my mouse is at? Yes. Just, just that's X1. Right. So that's X1. Now, my width is where I was, the position, plus where I am. That would be the width. Okay. Be the sum of them. Same with Y. So the Y was, I was here the first time, plus the, where I am right now. So that's what I'm looking for. Those should be plus, basically. But maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just thinking about it the wrong way. <laughs> where's, the, where's the starting point? Here's the starting point, and it doesn't change because X1 and Y1, I don't change them. Okay. Wherever I started, that should be where it is. Okay. So let me try that again. And I say, here's where I start. But as soon as it started, as soon as it started, the position, you see how big the Width height is 300. Yes, yes. The other one says, all right, so you just added them up. And when I start doing that, I think I understand what's going on. Because it is, this should happen only. When you, when you release it, when you release yeah. the key. I thought that it was supposed to do that, yes. All right, so here's the thing what happens is, this should happen that if x1 plus x2, right? Or, well, then 
more of that. How to, how to do that when they're in the same spot. Right. How, how, like, okay, so now let's do with the difference, okay? So let's, So difference here. All right. So the difference you say. So the difference. That would be the new location minus the original location. Which is what ChatGPT is just right at the beginning. Okay, that's better. Well, man, let's go. Here, um, well, I just ah. I'll that go, which it was working before. You have to put a down statement in. Let's look. Show the window. While the button is down. What you change? Ah, oh, you took out the page. I know. I think I know this. Not take that. We. It was better with the position in there. It's not about the position right now, it's about window not being shown and it's not being destroyed. It's kind of weird. Right now it's not logging in. Now, at this I use correct. That it takes oh time it worked. Now when I let go of it, letting go. So thinking that my mouse button is that kind of hurt. Oh you know what? This app and also. see how how the <laughs> delay actually helps. It's so weird. And and basically, as you can see, like, it is about experience. It has happened to me before. Like, the event just happened. The loop is so fast that it doesn't see that you leave the house button. But if you add just a little bit about the day, now it just works. It behaves as our as So you're right. Now we have this little window. Uh, we can change the color. So, after, yeah, whatever. The idea here is that this guy, I have the X and Y here. This is being updated. When I let go, I already have the X and Y and right, which again, with, um, vision now. Now, can you tell me? Why for you it makes sense that it's a different? I always have problems with this kind of thing. I always think the other way. Around. And I actually showed you graphically how I think. Like 
I think about one point, then I add another point, and that's how I'm thinking. But for you, it was like, no, it's a difference between that. <laughs> I, I, right? No, no, well, if, no, I can't explain it. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it just happens, I, right? <laughs> well, with experience, my, my experience is just backwards than yours. If I calculate, if I calculate the width of something, I go to the one side and to the other, and then take the difference between them. <laughs> okay, so this thing, the location. What you were doing was calculating a new coordinate at the at the at the other end, rather than calculating the width. Does that make sense? Sorry, what I was calculating. You weren't calculating width, you were calculating the new position. X, you were going from X1 over to X2. And that's not a, that's not a, that's not a link. No, okay. And the resources are gonna have to use, right? And for each image that I create, I would need, and this is the funny thing, when I show my GUI, every time it's shown, a new ID should be generated for whatever I'm working with. Then, the next time I take a screenshot, I should check if the window is already being shown or not. If it is there, it should not create a new ID. You know what I mean? Right. It's the same thing, right? So, what we're going to do now is just keep track of that. And we're almost done because right now, um, I'm going to give it an, uh, a location. Now I'm just going to put it in the first folder for the images. But I'm going to actually make a folder for each ID. So for each item that you create, have its own folder. Right. I don't know if that's okay for you or do you need it somewhere else. But for now, that's fine. I like that idea. Right. So now I'm just testing it so that I could do this. I have a oh sorry. And and for one file, so I'm gonna have a folder ID number B A that would be any I counted. That ID at that current so LB so that would automatically give so if the list view has zero one the list view has two the number three that should give something one And of course not, I don't want that. That's the point. That. Uh, so here, that we're working with, um, uh, and you see how it added it to the list. Now, if I hit escape, done. Then if I take it. Oh. It's adding them, but it's not taking this directly because. Have this oh, it's in a wrong spot. Oh, I know why. <laughs> because the coordinate mode. 
Delta, then the coordinate model relates to the active model. And also, Eight. There window. Ah, that one. That. That is in general. And want to display that image wherever I took. Ah. You see that it has been added to the same. And it is correct thing. It started with one, two, three, four, five. Next one. That's almost done. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's taking the image right off of a. Off, you're taking a screenshot of an image. Now we need to modify it to take a screenshot of a video. That no, no, it's okay. going to be that's different. okay. So, so let's let's test that. That's totally fine. And I think later during the day, the other emails arrived. Just now, I got the email. Oh, it did come. Right. It just took a little bit longer. Let's say that you want that. Okay. So let's say that you want that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Take, take, okay. okay. This right. So I want that chair, right? So at this point, right. um, let's run the script. Run it. I should be able to point at this thing. Look at it. Huh. Hey. Doesn't matter. Oh, my the only thing that you will not be able to do easily is to, I would say, pause. Pause the. Uh... No, no, no. When when you do that in Chrome. Chrome, when you're playing a video in Chrome, it does something that you cannot take this type of screenshots. But regarding being able to do it, yeah, no, sure, yeah, totally fine. All right? And actually, now I need this. <laughs> it's very, very easy. Now, my question is taking images from the videos, that's totally fine. Now, the screen, the script right now, it creates that uh, image. That image cannot be moved, but I can make it so that you can move it from it to the left, or it is just for you. Do you even need to see that image? Because right now, I'm showing it for me to, here, that's for me to, um, how do I say, see that it was working, but I don't have to. I can just go save the image. Uh, no, I'll need to be able to look at it to determine what it is and to fill out the boxes. Does that no, make I sense? I thought you were going to be doing that on. Let me see. I thought you were going to be doing that on. Uh, but you know what? I, I got an idea. I save the image and just have a place. On And make it movable. No, we'll have the section in here. So I'm going to move this down and have a section, a box there, in which I will display the image. Oh, the current one. You take another one in right there and the other one right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only problem with that is how big of an image. Oh, let's do this. Let's just test it, see how it looks, and we will. Oh. Right. So I will have the image here. Because that doubt said I'll take more than nine, three images. <laughs> what? I'm not going to take very many pictures of a, a particular item. Okay. Three would no, be a lot. So it's highly unlikely that you do that, but that's okay. So this starts on a new row. 21 rows. Five. Yeah. It is have the same width and say what the height is. So 
So we'll have, I'll make it a little bit more square. This is going to be down there. And now I'll pass, I don't know, a little bit. Make it space that we can. Uh, Have an image in here. Have the path just that you take. Every time I take a screenshot, say edge station, then path and that works. You've been selected, I think. No, it's not that. I, I seem to have to check code, you know, phase function. Setting the path. The other one, go. Yeah. All right. All right. Basically, you take a look at what it was, and it is there. How about that? Yes, that's, that's exactly right. Cool. So now, let's talk about the labels here. Do you rather have labels on top, or do you rather have it inside, like up? So, so you see... Oops. Will it get in the way if, there's, if it's just a prompt? Yeah, yeah, like this. So do you want the prompt to be inside the text, or would you want it to be kind of like outside of it? If it's inside, if it's inside will it remain? Will that be a value if you don't put anything in? You, you will see how it looks. This is what it looks like. There, and when you start typing, not there anymore. Oh, okay. But, but it is just kind of like a temporary prompt if there's nothing selected. I think that's fine. That's easy, right? Yeah. So, easy go. For you, for you everything's <laughs> easy. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the reason why it's easy is because I've solved the problem before and I already have a function for it. But yeah, at the beginning it was very. Interesting to solve, it was not easy. Um, yeah, I think we, we had a session on that. New banner here. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Right, so that is what I would use. I would just here, library folder. Now I just pull it with the control handle, okay. text, and whether to show. Now, working on. Let me do it finally. So, yep. 
except for nodes. Nodes are not going to work because multi line control. That's the of then those guys that would be and as you as soon as you code like this that is repeating means right remember that yes as soon as I do that I need six of those come on I don't want to do that I right away start thinking that's a loop I need an array say But it's saying that the problem here. Thanks. Banner. Now that I did that, script. Has the model, has the stuff in there, but as soon as I Eight. I remember regarding the date. Um, do you want it to default to a specific? Look how they do today. Yeah. I click on day. Okay, that's fine. It will default. So that's the what is that? That is the um, um purchase thing. Let me add that. Uh, Oh, and then I don't want to value. I don't want a default date. You want? Like, nothing. I don't want anything. Normally, I won't have anything there. But as you can see now, this is the purchase date. Then we have every single one of those guys having some. Click on them. They're just. Um, hmm. Now the node is here. The image is taken. That's as soon as I take one image, get it here. Now as soon as I take another image, okay. So it is already doing this, and the, okay, no. So we already solved the issue with the ID because the ID is created, generated when I keep the okay. you know what I mean. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm going to see the image. I, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm still back on purchase date. It's going to be used so little. I'm thinking maybe I just put it in as a note. Let me think about it. So the purchase date, I don't. Is the value of it? I have to have something. I think. That. Uh, how about plus that? Um, you have to put a pound. Unless I put something in it. So take it out. That could be. That could be then instead of a a date. Thing it could be uh, an edit field. Yes, yes, yeah, that's fine. You see how easy now that it is an, a, a loop. You see now I needed to add one, I just, this, and I know that it's going to work. Just because of that, it should work. But yep, it yep. works. So when we start. So that is option. What are things that are not
bring it back up on the left. Okay. It's got to have an item. Okay. It's got to have a name for the item, right? That seems pretty obvious. Right. But it certainly doesn't have to have price, make, model, or serial number. And it probably needs, it probably needs a location. It's, everything's got to be someplace, right? Right. So we are, no. everything got to be in some place, and that means that all the other things are optional. Which means right. that's what I would do. Put the location and the item like very close to each other. Those right, are right. the most important ones. But put the item and the location, then everything else is optional. Right. And right. I would have item is the first thing, location next to it. Ah. Then we have purchase. I put that at the bottom. Item, station, bank and model, serial number and purchasing, price of it. Those two are very important to us. They are actually. So you can put a control that says hey, non blank. Sorry? Can you control it? Put a control in that they have to have a value? If item is yeah, right, then okay now when I hit OK to check for those two and if they're empty, we we'll right away complain about it. Right. But now if I cancel, it will clear everything off. So be careful that's with the true. cancel because that erases everything that you've done. That's something that you want. for that item. Yeah, for that item, of course. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. All right, so let's do this. Um, now, when I hit cancel, it should delete the images that were created. Because the image is created already because I took a screenshot. So the idea here is that if I took a screenshot, well, I have to go ahead and delete that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I show it, I show I already have no. Oh yeah, I do this when I show it the first. Track of it. Also, then that um, I would I would what is that? So right now the default class. It's just copying, right? It's exactly the same. They're the same. Right, right. Oh, everything. okay. Right, now, right. I'm replacing the show function from my GUI. You know that GUI show, shows the GUI, right? Right. But I'm replacing it because I want to do something additional. Right? I want to keep track of an ID or something. But once I do whatever I want to do, now I want to call the original function from GUI. This keyword called super. Is referring to the parent class that that one. Yes, it does. And yes. that's just and that just happens because I'm replacing that function. If I'm not replacing it, I don't have to. Do it. It's just in the case that I want to do. Something. Let me test it. So this creates ID once. So um, no, fun. Not once. Every time. I'm taking a start and calling this, but I don't want to call it every single time. I just want to call it if I don't have it. Now my 
espera. Instant. So that means now I can use the ID if not. I don't have anything. Go with and create an ID for me. If I do have an ID, don't recreate. Name. So that's the thing. Now with experience, I keep track of all the places that I have to do it. Like for example, I just decided, oh, I'm going to have a variable called ID. It's track of it, right? So now right. I have to remember when I reset my GUI, I also have to reset the ID. And also, if I have never called my main GUI, it should be zero. And what I mean, so I have to remember to do that, but I'm keeping all of that in one place. That's the reason why I keep everything in a class, because if not, I would have to go through different files to figure out where to reset it. But in here, I keep everything related to this GUI, this place. And if I have to do something, oh, yeah, I put it here, I set it here, and I'm good to so, go. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's the idea with the classes, that it just keeps everything organized in one. And right now, I think it's good to go. The only thing is, oh, whenever you transfer, now you have to reset the window. Because you finished with that particular item, and now you're resetting and starting over with a different one. Right? So that allows me to know. Now I know that, that is going to clear my ID as well. So that's great. What I mean? So, right. And Everywhere where I'm seeing, name it. Sign text path. So default, same as. That makes it so that if I have multiple GUIs of the same type, everything refers to that one copy. So I just make sure I'm not here. You remember that we were using by itself. Now this would be now in all of it same right. That is because all of these methods are inside this class, and whenever I refer to this a copy, I refer. To we are ready. This but just take screenshots now. The last thing that I need to do is when I uh, take a shot, increase my so whenever I take a screenshot, I created this on my script in case you delete you deleted it. I and for saving my stuff, I will save directory. I'll be half minute, right? If I don't have an idea, and this is going to be my I would. Then, um, so I will already have a folder for the particular item that I'm looking at, and inside that folder, I'm going to have a images, maybe. I don't know. Uh I don't have the item name. I don't think I like that. I don't think I want a folder for every item. Okay, that was what I mentioned before. You just want one folder where all your items are going to be. Either that or by location, one of the two. When you say by location, what do you mean? Oh, okay, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, 
by location. The problem with that approach is that I don't know the location yet because you have to fill that out, but I already took I have to know where I'm going. I mean, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's not make it that complicated. Then. Right. Let's just so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and create it in the, in the here on where they locate where all the images are. So I'm going to have one place for all of them, and the image is going to be ID of the image, so main ID plus the number. I can have three for all. That's it. Yeah. I think that's later. So, okay. And uh, I take a screenshot of the button. Got the button. I got button one uh, in my computer. Whatever it is. Nothing else. All right, I have that. I already have one image. I'm done with it. I'm not going to do anything else. I use it. It's good. It's just one image. I can hit OK. And here I should find one line already. With the information. So the ID was done. The image there, that's my folder. Now that folder right here, should it be the full path? I think it should be the full path, right? Front yeah, I think so. Path to the image, right? Then the name, the price, I left some blank, the location, that's fine. Now let me do something with multiple things. So now this this guy, this coordinate mode, images are going to look a little bit weird sometimes because how they are done. But I could just move this away or minimize it if I and take another image. Put it, now I have two of them, right? So I have two images, same item. This is going to be my cohort mode. Uh, five. Purchase date is empty. I don't know why I put something. Now, here, pros, same guy. Images. And one of those rows has to be the other two. I like that. Yep, we got to figure out why the date's being put in. And yeah, I will just clean that in a second. Everything is looking yeah. good. Except for the entry date, the entry date should remain like that because it's by itself. Um, right. And I also want to test something. So uh, when we are yeah. saving. And verify those two, two fields that have data. This is the purchase thing. So it's empty problem set. Just whatever you have in there. Yeah, yeah. That takes care of that one. And now let me ask you this. So how are you gonna input eight? Let me show the group. Right, so here's the purchase date. You will have to say, you know, 2024, be both, but that way, or are you going to do something else? I usually do not like dates like that, but um, it's the simplest method right now. For now, we can leave it at that. I think we're good to go. And um, my question now is, ah, what happens if there is no con? What happens if Tries to connect. In other words, Excel is not up. Happens. There is an 
spell object in the background. It just so happens that it connected to the text. This happens because the spell keeps on like a background. That is where all the annoying problems come. It's always running, in other words. Sorry? Right. It's always it's always running. Right. Now the problem is that now if we try to do anything it will fail. But it is because of that. So close it. I should get an error. So what we're gonna do how about check that book is um not uh, whatever you're gonna call your file I don't know, document have to change just this. So the line is file, right? Point ready. Right now I shouldn't errors. Right? But if I close it, I try to reload it. Okay, you have to open that file. Or we would just run it ourselves. No, I like the I like the way it is. All right, so that's it. And I think we already have almost everything set up. I will send you this file. Then you can yeah. either modify it yourself, or you let me know if you need help. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I can probably figure out how to do that. Make sure those two fields have something in them. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it's, that. It's not that hard. I, I it's pretty, pretty critical that it have at least the item name. So let me do this. If I do that, and if uh, main item, the one do it. Right. Right. Sure. That is. Turn. Required. Let's try that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A point of it. We knew we, we needed that. <laughs> right. That's the reason why it's better to have stuff check. For it instead of we it. right now it's and I try to do and hey you know I don't know location or and if I put just one other or, or I could check them independently instead of just okay that way I've messed uh, item required. That way it's kind of like it tells you which one. Right. right. And, you know, yeah. in the heat of working through it, it'll be uh, yeah. easy to miss putting in values. Right. But you can see, that's how you make requirement, require parameters, items, function that your action, before doing anything else, check for those, have something. Don't stop right there. Right. So I think we're good here. Um, uh, do you have any questions? No, uh, build it into a zip file with the appropriate uh, libraries, and I will uh, test it out. Probably not today. I'm about exhausted. Yeah, I uh, imagine.
There you go. Good to go. Okay, thank you for your time and I uh, look forward to there's welcome. Bye. Okay, bye bye.